Well, oh, man, it's almost a good graphic. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's everybody doing? You can almost see us down there. Well, that means it's, oh, it's not. There's a creeper below. It means it's not, ah! it's not the right size, but that's okay. We'll fix it later. I, no, we are not doing this already. Oh, let's see. I see Sylvia, Nancy, Jill, Becky, Kim. Hello. Hey, everybody. You guys remember that show, Romper Room? I see so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. Romper Room? Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. So we are going to just dive right into it because we're doing two videos. If you did not know that, video one is here. Welcome. How are you? And we're going to get our surface prepped, painted, glazed, and ready. When we're done, we're going to hop over to our other channel and finish it over uh, there. But a few announcements. If you missed my Ken from the car, this guy has a channel now. YouTube channel. So if you want to be part of Cooking with Sean, you can go to this camera and show your cute little logo. Look at this cutie patootie. Cooking with Sean. You can also bring it in as a graphic if you wanted to. Yeah, good. Um, so check out his channel um, and subscribe, like all the pages and stuff, because my plan is to be a millionaire by this time next year with his own cookware in like all of the stores. Rachel Ray, move out of the way, is what I'm saying. Okay, um, so there's that. Number two, I have merch. So if you, oh, excuse me. If you want to check out my merch, there should be a link and you can get shirts and mugs and face masks and accessory pouches and all sorts of goodness. Mm -hmm. um, we just launched it. Look at how cute they are. And there's more to come. Look at them. Look at my cute little puppies. That's a puppy. You can get that. You can get a shirt. You can get a logo with it says official crew member. You can get a mask that says Linda Listen WTF. Wear your face mask. You can get a coffee mug that says Shut the fuck up with me and my sleep mask. You, we're gonna have ears. We we just got it all. We got phone cases. Oh yeah. We're, we're, we got merch. Now we can literally say, don't forget to look at our merch. Um, all right. So let's just dive. Oh, look it. Drill was done. Been, you forgot to close well, it in the background. That's right. It's, you did final, you cut, they don't quit see time, but final cut pro you need to, yeah. cause that's going to take up a lot of your memory. Um, so no, you have to quit. Sorry guys. They can't see this. So. I know, but we're interrupting it and they don't know what's going on. Okay. Now ditch it. There you go, love. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Today, we are going to be making a Seasons Greeting Cupboard Front. But I want to prep the cupboard front that we got at Habitat for Humanity. Here is what it looked like. That was a pain to sand, but... This was a pain to sand, and Sean did a very good job. Um, so for this project to prep, we are going to be using Dixie Bell Glazes paint. Mm -hmm. And Would You Bend, which let's just open that box really quick. Might as well. We got our box of goodies in. For those of you who do not know what Would You Bend is, it is awesome. And it's something we're going to be using. First of all, I have to say shipping was, they did such a good job on shipping. Um, so this is the, the, the well, let's, this is the one we're actually going to be using today. But look at this. Look at how well they ship this stuff. Like everything's rubber band. So essentially this is solid pieces of wood that when you heat it, um, it becomes flexible and you're able to use it and wrap it around stuff. And we have all sorts of goodness in here. And we're gonna actually do an unboxing next week of this stuff because we're gonna be using a lot of the trim. Um, but specifically, look at some of this stuff. It's so cute. Look at this. Those grapes. Yeah, Grapefruit. and they've been so kind to give us a coupon code. So you can use Ken has 10 and it gets 10% off. And the link down below, um, use the link down below because that gives us uh, Corners. a little, I know, isn't that beautiful? Um, we got beautiful trim. Wait till you see some of this trim we got. This is like, we've already used this trim, but it's still one of my favorite trims. We got some rope trim. 
So I'll do an official unboxing next week. Look at this trim. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm super excited. The one we're using today is actually this one right here. Let me move this out of the way. All right. <clears throat> so if you guys have any questions or anything, let us know. But I'm going to bring in um, this first. So if you've not worked with glazes with Dixie Bell, so here's the thing. When I first got the Dixie Bell glazes, this guy was like, I don't get it. And I was like, I don't understand what you mean. So what I, what I mean by that is he was trying to make it feel like it was paint or something. So Dixie Bell glazes, a um, couple things I recommend is number one, obviously we did it over a, uh, this is sand, sand bar, but essentially you can do different things with it. You can do what's called like highlighting. You can do all over. Um, so for example, here is where we just kind of did this kind of messy look. Uh, over here is some glazes that we painted all over. So you have like, here is a shimmer gold and shimmer copper. So I have my review video down there. But the one thing um, I will say, so where did we get the trim from? We got the trim from Would You Bend. Would You Bend. And you can get the link down below. Mm -hmm. They have trim, they have all sorts of stuff. And you can use our link and coupon code KenHess10 to get 10% off. So when you first looked at the glaze, Sean, tell me what you were thinking or you, you kind of did. Well, first I wasn't sure first. what, I mean, I've heard of glazes. I've been around long enough to know I've heard of glazes. I've never mm -hmm. used a glaze mm -hmm. before or seen it done. But now that you've done it, it's basically glazing. You're actually changing yeah. the top coat of your paint yes. to either highlight, enhance, or do a complete change. Yep. So let me show you. Let's By go back down. Still keeping the color. Yep. Kind Let's of go back down to here. So um, we have a whole bunch of. They actually have nine different colors. So let's zoom in just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So the plus part here, this here, this is the color that's underneath all of these glazes. So this is kind of a, a grayish color. I forget which one it was called. So this is the glazes. So it's pretty thin stuff. Now the thing that I've, I've learned, so this here is called gold shimmer and that's this one. We also have the copper bronze. This is the sapphire, which is under here, yep. right here. This is grunge, mm -hmm. high ho silver, mm -hmm. pearlescent over here. And then I have the other ones. Now, the thing I've learned is really glazes is going to be basically what you want to do with it. So when you're using a glaze, they do recommend um, doing a top coat. You don't necessarily need it, but the reason for the top coat is without a top coat, your paint underneath of it could soak up the glaze and you won't have as much time to manipulate it. Cause that's really what you're doing with glaze. When you look at something, for example, like this, this, we just basically did a full on overglaze, a whole coat. So there wasn't a lot of manipulation where here, it truly was us moving the glaze around and getting it this grungy look. But your first coat, if you don't have a top coat, it's gonna soak up that glaze and you won't have as much time. Um, and as it dries, we'll use a towel, but you don't want to rub all the glaze off because it will just get rid of it. So we're going to achieve kind of this look here. So we're going to paint our first layer, apply the whitewash glaze, and then we're going to do some distressing with the black glaze. So um, once you get a feel for it, they're pretty easy to use. Yep. Like this one is a whitewash with the black. Yes. Just to highlight the trim inside and stuff. All right. So let's get started. I do have a puppy in the way, so hopefully she doesn't trip me. Because she, this is her new favorite spot is to be right there. Right here. Darn you, little girl. You're a cutie, yeah, though. She's right there. <laughs> Everyone loves you, but you are right in the way. Okay. So Sean did a wonderful job sanding this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply our base coat, which we are going to be utilizing driftwood. So I kind of wanted a dark brown, or a gray, excuse me, a light gray on this. And 
You could do a couple different things. I'm gonna be using their synthetic brushes. I love Dixie Bell's synthetic brushes. The thing on this though is, um, there we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, these sometimes do go out of stock very quick. If that's the case, just sign up for alerts and it will come, you'll get an alert that says it's back in stock. So I'm gonna do a full over, I'm just going to add two coats, and this dries pretty quick. The reason we sanded it is um, if you do not sand this, and we just basically want to put it on the top, and put the glue. Covers, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, <laughs> so basically, the reason why we sanded this is if we were to paint on top, and then put the glaze, when you actually rub the glaze off, it will rub the actual paint off too. Okay, now what were you going to say, Sean? The, most of your doors are covered with a, a coating like a, a, a varnish. poly varnish, and it's very thick. So that's yeah. what took so long to get it off. So, but it's, it is important because without that, the first few glazes we did, the paint just came right off with it. So I highly recommend sanding it or putting a finishing coat on, like they recommend. Now, Dixie Bell paint is a little bit on the thicker side, so if you do want to water it down, you can. You will find that their glazes are not. It is very much so um, a thinner on that. So we're gonna get this first full coat. Where are you going? Someone asked a question. I've got to go get oh, it. someone asked a question. He's off to go get your answer. I don't know what that is, but he's off to see the wizard. Okay, so. Now the thing I love about their synthetic brushes is the coverage. You get really good coverage on this. And if at any time you feel like it is just still a little thick, just take a little bit of water from a spray and then it will easily thin out for you. This is what I used. My Ryobi sander. Yep. I used a uh, 100 grit and I didn't quite finish off with 220 like I wanted to. But uh, it's still pretty smooth. I wish I had more of a like an 80 grid that would have been probably a little better. So instead of um, dipping your paintbrush in the water to thin it out, um, I spray the water on the paint and thin it out this way. So this way I'm not, because if you get it too saturated in water, it's going to get really thin. So, yeah, just a little bit more. We'll do a dry and then a second coat. Probably one coat would be fine. Um, did you do two coats on the other ones or just one? Um, I think I did two only because I wanted to, but you, I think if you have good coverage, there's no reason. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. Did I miss anywhere that you, you can see? A really big spot there. Big spot, that's high jargon there. Splat. Looks like on the edge here in the corner. Okay, Mr. McCoy, anywhere else? Along your edge here. Yeah, sometimes you can spray on it. You can even put it on a like if you have something to put your paint on it, you can put it on there wet and thin it out if you want. All right, so we're gonna put this into water and it can just sit in there and I'm going to dry this. So we do want to dry this really well before we do our next. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this on the heat, uh, hot setting of my hair dryer.
Try to get you that link, guys. One moment. Love my Ryobis, says Pixaloo. What are you trying to get my link to, Sean? Uh, Dixie Bell. Just Dixie Bell in general, or um, a specific paint? No, somebody wanted to know what the color was, so I named the color. Gotcha. Here you go. Thanks. Okay, so we have a dry um, coat here, and it's pretty good. So we can move on to the whitewash. So the whitewash glaze is, so number one is I would shake this. Now we could do a top coat. Do you want to do a top coat or what do you think? Because I do have it. We can do a satin top coat. If you want to try, we haven't used it yet, so we don't know exactly what, but yeah. Now this, I don't, we don't know how long it takes to dry, but I'm assuming all the other stuff is pretty quick. I don't know. I think it might take. Like when we, when we do the gels uh, or the no pain, those have to wait six to eight hours between each coat. I never do. You have to. It, you oh, know, the oil ones. Oil ones, yes. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oil ones. Those you have to wait before you put the second coat on. If you want a second coat. Try to get this plastic out, but I'm having problems. So really all the, the um, coat is going to do is it's going to not have our paint absorb the whitewash as much. So I'm just doing a very thin layer of this coat. Sorry about the crinkling in your ear. There we go. Somebody asked, who was it? Michelle asked, uh, the paint does dry really fast. Do they have, whoops, do they have larger sizes? Yeah, they have all the way up to a gallon. Mm -hmm. I think their smallest is four ounces. Six. Or six, and then... Actually, eight, I think. That's their smallest? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what ours are. Yeah, so little pint, almost, well, eight ounces a cup. And then they go from there. They have a 16 ounce, and then all the way up to the a gallon. Yeah. There are some colors where they only come in the larger ones only. Lisa says it will dry pretty quick. Thanks. Yeah, it does dry pretty quick. I can already tell. So basically, it doesn't take much. And I like the satin. It is, they have a gloss, they have the satin, and then they have a, um, uh, like a regular. So we're going to do the satin, let it dry, and then we'll add our white light. So there we go. There we go. Let's go ahead and put this on. Excuse me. Okay, so we have a nice gloss, um, or you can see that it's still a little wet, not too bad, but we can move on to the whitewash. So, their glazes, I always recommend shaking it at first. Mm -hmm. So Lisa says you can also put this on with their with their blue thing, which we don't have those yet either. Yep. We're, gonna We're slowly adding on. stuff. Yep. So I'm actually just going to put this on um, with their bell brush is what I think Sean used on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm shaking it, and you'll note that this is pretty thin stuff. So, do I want to use that, or do I want to use... 
just a chip brush or even this. Did you use the bell brush for all over? Hmm. All right, so we'll do that. So, so now normally if I had not put a coat on this, the paint underneath of it would absorb it pretty quick. So you kind of, I wouldn't say you have to move really quick, but it will absorb it. So I'm just going to make sure I get it all over because I want to do a all over whitewash look on this. And then I can, if I want to remove some with my shop towel, I can, or I can leave it all on. But let's get this first base here. And then if you're working on a larger project, I would say it's important to kind of do it in phases. Because if, especially if you didn't put a clear coat on it, it will dry quick on you. Um, and once it's dry, the only way, you can't really get it off, you would have to paint over it. Otto asks, is there any product that must be used as, an, as only the final coat? They do have some final coats out there as well, depending on top, what, yeah. there's a couple top, top coats, there's even one called uh, Gator Coat. That's Gator like, Hide. Gator Hide, it's like one of their strongest uh, stuff. I think you would use that for a lot of their stuff if you look. They also have something called White Lightning, which is kind of their cleaner that they'll tell you to prep your surface with. Now, mm -hmm. so, there is kind of our white wash. Now we can, um, do a couple things. You can let it dry, or if you want to remove it, if you want to get your um, brush strokes in there or whatever, you can also just take a white towel and start removing it. But we found that we actually kind of liked it a little bit uh, dry first, and then we start removing it. And I don't even know if on the other one you removed any of it. No, I put it on pretty, yeah, pretty thin and did a fast stroke, uh, fast strokes back and forth to put it on thin. Yeah. So that's the nice thing is, is if you go pretty thin with this and then like he said, kind of do those fast strokes, it will almost dry pretty quick. Yeah. And we actually want kind of this overall um, coverage because we're going to now after this use our black glaze to get that distressing. So there's a little spots down here that I want to add a little bit more. So this is easy and it's also nice because you can over you can layer it with other colors so you can use um you know add some more paint overlay it so you can even mix it with other colors to get some different nice colors so it's pretty versatile and so is their metallic paint i'm pretty impressed with it yep very cool stuff all right i think we're good unless you see any place no it's really nice All right. So these are going to end up going here on our final product. And these are going to be, um, uh, I'm not gonna whitewash, I'm just actually gonna do these with the black glaze. So I do want though to get this with the base coverage of the color we used, which was, yeah, where'd it go? What was it called? Driftwood, I believe. Do you have it over there? No. It was, oh, here it is. I it, found it. It is driftwood, right? Yeah, I used driftwood. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to paint these really quick. And what will be nice on these is, and maybe I'll do a little bit of whitewash. Uh, I don't know. Um, is the glazing looks really good on trim yeah they have a few other things that look really nice that we can hope to do i just have to wait to get some of the stuff but here's what i love about this is and i'm not exaggerating we paid a dollar for this cupboard drawer front and you know it, it, i really am into this uh kind of junking it up not junky to that, but you know, getting that look of antique or a worn, but still pretty. And that's what I love. And this, as Sean said, this paint dries pretty quick. Mm 
you can just walk away and be it'll be dry probably within 10 minutes of just air let it air dry yeah the only thing i recommend is if you are going to be doing a lot of layering with it or something to uh, water it down a bit. I think it goes a little further and it gives you a better layered look. But if you want the full cut on coverage, it works great. So this one, we're not going to use a whitewash. We're just going to glaze with the black so it stands out from that. All right, let me do a final look, see, to see if we got all our coverage. There's that one. Perfect. So we're gonna put these guys off to the side. All right. Now we can start doing some fun with the black. So I'm actually going to remove this. Actually, we're gonna put the trim on that. So we put the trim on that. All right, now I do want to dry this before we get on to the black glaze. So give me one sec. All right, so let's grab the black glaze. Now, a ton of people will say um, that's blue, and it is. It's blue, but it dries black. So I'm going to shake, 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 open it up, and I actually will just use kind of what's in the lid. Now, this is where I will tell you, this is, so we're going to be utilizing this to really do some highlighting in the drawer front. So work in sections, you can manipulate it. I found it easier to dry a little bit with my hair dryer and then remove with the shop towel because sometimes if you just put it on and try to remove it too quick, um, it, it removes all of it. It just takes, it disappears and there's nothing it, there. Yeah. So I'm going to grab this. This is the French tip brush and I'm just going to hit especially these areas right here. Fatima asks, you can mix paints to get new colors. Can you do that with the glazes? Uh, yes, I think you can. Mm -hmm. I i don't think I've seen anything done on it yet, but I believe you can. You can get a couple different looks. Like if you wanted a little bit of the, maybe the pearlescent and the gold maybe. So the first layer I'm going to be putting down is a little bit on the thin layer, and then we're going to add some as we go and this stuff as sean said will even start drying even with you just using the brush uh it dries pretty quick so let's go ahead and just add some and then you can grab any kind of shop towel and just gently and when i say gently see how much that removed it almost removes it all so that's where that kind of that gentle and i almost say like the first layer um you almost remove and it kind of then so we're gonna add this all the way around this kind of first Whoa. What are you doing, Shawnee? I'm just trying to move the camera. I'm barely touching it. Thought it'd have a mind of its own. It took off. It might have. You never know. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for just a second. I'm going to start doing on the outside here, highlighting it. And then we're going to go in a little bit 
uh, darker on some of this. What would you say was the most intimidating thing about working with it and what you were surprised mostly about working well, with the Well, I wasn't voices? sure exactly how it all, how it works drying wise and stuff, but once you kind of get the hang of it, the nice thing is, is if you actually make a mistake and you cannot fix it, you can actually repaint it and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I noticed in the video, Jasmine did kind of part of it and then you stepped in and finished it. Cause yeah, she was a little afraid to do it. It's intimidating at first until I even showed Sean like, hey, just think of it this way. But uh, I think people want to say like, not that they want to put it into a square, but I think it's, they're more thinking like, oh, it's going to be like a paint and I should be getting the same coverage and oh no, you know, it's moving to, and the point is, is you really do want it to be a little bit thinner so you can manipulate it and move it and that's what the point i think with the glaze is is really getting that time to kind of get in there and play with it mm -hmm. and then we're going to darken it up on these edges right now i just kind of want to get an overall and then as you can already see the darkness is already coming yep and this is kind of why you want that top coat because as i start removing this with the shop towel if you don't have that, in fact, our first time we used it and we took a shop towel tool, it, it literally took the paint up with it. So I tend to take a dryer once I like the look. So just to give you kind of a reference of what we've gone from into, this is of course what it started off as, and here's where we have it right now. So now I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this. And once again, you can actually even grab, um, like a really tiny brush to get into the nice corner. So I can even grab this little distress brush and we can then manipulate in those corners if you want. So sometimes these bigger brushes, it's hard to get in there and get that, that look you want. So you can actually take this, like that, or you can just continue to work with this. And personally, I, uh, I don't mind working with the bigger one and then just using the brush as your tool. Like Sean said earlier, it's almost easy to, because it is so thin, you can put it on and just using the brush, use it to, to get the paint to where it naturally dries because you're going back and forth with it. And to me, that gives it a better look than trying to remove it. Lisa says you should show people the gilding waxes. Do, we have, do they have gilding waxes? They do, but I don't have them yet. Yeah, we don't have those yet. And then I uh, have some of their new moose coming. Ah, yes, the new moose. Okay, so now I'm just going to be utilizing the paintbrush to kind of go back and forth. And you want it to kind of stay in those crevices because uh, even though it's blue, it will dry to that darker color. And if you remove it too much off of those crevices, you won't get that nice look we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, not to say Jazzy was scared, but it is a little bit more intimidating because it's, um, it really is you're manipulating it to kind of get there. But I personally feel when it comes to this glaze, you can't really, as Sean said, even if you remove too much or you didn't put enough on, just repaint it. And then this truly is the more layers you start adding to it, the more of a um, unique look you're going to get. Now you'll notice I haven't put a lot in here because that's where my design's actually going to go when I'm done with this. So um, 
We're going to talk about that in a sec. So now I'm just going to go through and very gently go back and forth with this and do the same thing here, back and forth, because if I start going left to right on this, it will leave um, that kind of brush mark there, which isn't a bad thing. It's just if that's not what we're going for. So I'll usually sometimes do that and then and then clean off my brush and then I'm going to do big strokes. Now if we didn't put the top coat on and you started doing this glaze, it starts absorbing into the paint and stuff so it dries quickly that way so you have to kind of work with it a little faster but because we have the top coat it doesn't happen as fast. Correct. All right so I move the material with it instead of me moving so this way I can make sure like on this side we didn't even paint real good on this side so we might have to add some paint because that was away from us. Janet said she went to go look for that recipe and it's not there. On the cashew chicken? Mm -hmm. and I don't know why it's not there. Maybe when you were updating all the links. I'll have to get it afterwards. Oh, yeah. We'll have to do it later, Janet. Yeah, we'll get I'll it get it for you, I promise. All right, so I missed a little spot, so I'm gonna grab my driftwood. And just get that over here. And dry that real quick. All right. So let's go ahead and bring this home and then we're gonna distress this over here. So you can see where it's still kind of wet. And so I'm just gonna be using this paintbrush and as it dries, it's, I wouldn't say it gets tacky, but it definitely, you can feel the resistance in the glaze, I guess is the best way to say it. And that's where you kind of want to start manipulating it because it is, that's where the, the glaze really takes effect is when you get to that kind of almost tacky feel. And then the last thing I'm going to do, even though I'm going to be utilizing mostly this in lighter colors, is I do want to just add just ever so slightly have it bleed from in here down a little bit so it's not such a rough edge, but a little distressing there. All right, anywhere else we should add, Sean? Looks nice. Looks very, very good. All right, let's do a dry and we'll take a final look.
Okay, we're gonna let this chillax for a sec. And I'm gonna just put it over there. And this way I can add So there is black and there is grunge. The grunge gives you more of a grungy, I guess, look. Dirty. 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 So we're actually going to be using a little bit of both. So I'm going to have both open. And you can see the little difference. This will do definitely dry more of that blue, or the, excuse me, black. Let me grab... So I'm going to start with the grunge, and then we'll put a little bit of black mixed in with it. Now remember, we didn't put a top coat on this, so this first layer I put down will will absorb pretty um pretty quick into the paint because we didn't put down any kind of top coat. Well, so much better when you actually shake it. Mm -hmm. Shake well before using. So we're going to do another layer of grunge and then we're going to do some black and hopefully you can see as it dries there that grunge look you're getting and that's what we want. And I'm just doing an overall grunge and then we're going to go in with a smaller paintbrush and do black highlighting with the glaze. So I just am kind of getting that um, stippling or pickling look with this and then we're going to go in with the black. That looks such so good. Please see. Let me see if it'll focus on this. That kind of glazed look we got there. You see how it's kind of got that kind of dirty, grungy look, which is what we wanted with this first one. And anywhere it's pooled, I'm just going to take this paintbrush and kind of fan it out because I really don't want a ton of pooling on this. And now we can add the black on top of this. 
And I might actually go back with this grunge on here and then add another layer of black. We'll see. So now we're going to take the top and do a nice black. Remember, the black's going to go on blue. Oh, actually, I wanted to use a finer brush on this. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of going to polka dot pottery where they always say the glaze will be different. When you put glaze on, it's always a weird color. Isn't it like a light blue or something usually, Shani? Something like that, yeah. It's always, the glazes are a little different and then once it dries, it's completely different. Hello, Deb. So I am putting this on pretty thick because I do want it to be pretty dramatic against it. So let's start there. Add it to this. I might just add a little bit of grunge onto the other one to get some more of that brownish color in there. Because I really like that. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out and lay it on there and see what we think. That's what's cool about it is this is something you can totally layer and kind of come up with some really cool looks. So the reason I'm going back over with this is I really want the black glaze to be in the crevices, but I don't really want it to be um, overall uh, like a paint. So you'll see me put a lot in here and then that sponge is removing it from the top areas where it just kind of goes into those crevices where I want it. Mm -hmm. And that was what was kind of cool about this when I was doing my research on this and how do I want to use this. A lot of videos of other creators I saw, they use the glaze all differently. They all had a unique way to use it or the look. So um, it really does give you a lot of creative freedom. Good way of putting it, Heidi. What I love about glazes is that they add another layer of dimension. Yep. True, true. Okay, so I'm just going to very gently. All right, now let's go ahead and dry. Okay, and we're just going to go in there where everywhere it's pooled and just kind of feather it out to get that. And we'll do one final glaze after this that will do a... Do you think I should add...
What do you think? Should we add some grunge or no? Do you like it just like that? I mean, I like it as is. That that lets them sit out better. Okay. Um, Sonia says it almost looks like a metal. It does. Oh. All right, so we're going to add a little bit more, just a tad more to this to get that nice black where it pops, which is what I really want it to do on that drawer front. Because we're going to have a lot of reds and blacks um, when we do our second part. So once again, I'm just taking this and you can use a sponge or just a paintbrush and really uh, putting it on in there thick. We'll then remove it and then dry it and that will give us this nice grungy blacky look. Holly says, would you bend? Fell in, la fell in love with the site. Thank you for the referral. You bet. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome. awesome. And we are just, just getting started with it. It is such a cool concept, especially when it comes to making our frames and adding trim. Fatima says, I think I missed my calling as a surface prep. It's fun and messy, my type of craft work. I, yes. like, I like the paint and the voodoo stain is water-based, no odor. Yep, it's and this has no odor either. The yeah. only thing that really has an odor that I can say is their oil stain. Yeah, it's a typical oil smell. Yeah. We haven't used it a ton, but even their clear coats don't have mm. that much of an odor. Their paint doesn't. <clears throat> nope. So I have to say I'm pretty impressed with it. All right, I think I got all of... Oh, no, got to get some on the side here. Julie Miller, Ken, you're a genius. How do you come up with all your brilliant ideas? So let's go ahead... Just have fun. I'm telling you, this stuff, Dixie Bells made it to where this stuff is so easy to use. So I'm just going to take this baby wipe and come and very gently dab away some of the uh, black that I don't want. That's enough. Because I really don't want it um, pooling down the side. But So all I'm doing is just taking it and we're going to grab the baby wipe and bring it off to the side here, especially if I missed any spots. And then I'll do a final look. So finally, just take a paintbrush in here where it is still pooling if you don't want it that much and just start. As Sean said earlier, it really is um, the brush itself will do a lot of the drying for you as you spread it over your piece. Alright. 
one off while I dry this one off the camera. It's kind of still sticky, so be careful. Wow. All right, let's move this out of the way and let's bring in our cover drawer front. And we're gonna do a final look here to see if we wanna add any more color. So we have, can you zoom out a little shiny? So these, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's so gorge. Can you do the mirror or turn in? Huh? Where this is mirrored, or you can do it the other way where they're both inward facing. Does it matter? Hmm? Oh, I just thought wonder, you were. Just wondering if you had an idea. So, I was going to add some grunge, but I think you're right. This yeah. makes it stand out. Yep. Uh, and, and this center part is where we're going to be put, putting a lot of uh, my design. So, I don't need to add too much there. So the last thing we need to do is just attach these. So you can use wood glue, you can use hot glue, um, but we'll probably do that. Well, we can do it now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it now? On, unless I have, should I use hot glue or should I use my super glue? Or should I you have the wood glue back there. Oh, you, that's right. We, we found the wood glue. He knew he had it, just didn't know where it was, and he found it. Uh, does it feel like you want it wants to spend something this thick would take um, quite a while to get with a hairdryer to get it to the point of where you want it to bend? I mean, it's, it's got a slight feeling that it would like to bend, but I would highly recommend using a, um, a heat gun, something that's a lot hotter and doing it and just going over over it. And of course, you could you could put this over something that's curved or something that's round. You could literally put this something that's round up and around or something like that or flat. I mean, you can see that this is a lot does well for something that's flat, but it can it can be bent you know around I something. Might add a little bit of the grunge because I'm putting pine cones on it. So wouldn't it be nice to have a little brown in there? It's up to you. What do you think? Let's look. I'm not the designer. I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. I guess it's fine. What do you think? I think it's fine. Okay. You think it's fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's fine. This is what <clears throat> happens when you have a little puppy who likes to get into your stash. Your your decor stash. All right. I'm gonna let you take the price tag off those just for now, and then I'm gonna go grab the wood glue. My glue. Yeah, this will be fun. See, I need a little knife. I hear jingle bells, jingle bells. Is that holiday decor? Yes, Laura, it is. My mastiff started barking because of the bells. Interesting. All right, Sean, you're gonna have to be my, is it level? 
And something long so you can like put it at the top, you know. Well, you just move that one. Hold that, right. please. Jingle bells, shiny smells. I do what? I think that's pretty good. What says you, Mr. McCoy? I think it looks lovely. Does it look straight? Even? Mm hmm. Are we sure? Looks pretty good. My nose is running. Running, running, running. So from here, so we're at four and three, almost four and three quarters. Four and uh, no, it's right before the little halfy. Right before the little halfy. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we are gonna let this dry. It doesn't take long. This this glue, and then I love it. So this was a dollar for this this. Uh, and then we're going to add some elements to it on our other channel. So um, that portion shouldn't take too long. We should be live over there probably in the next, what time is it? 7.45. We'll be there by 8 and done by probably 8.30. So, yep. all right. So we'll see you guys over there. And yeah, we'll see you there in a couple minutes.